Previously, I showed you how to install the Employer View 3. It was relatively easy to do. Today, I'll show you how to flash it with ESP Home firmware, so it's 100% local. By default, the View 3 is tied to the cloud, and there is a huge delay, up to 2 minutes. That's really bad, as I've demonstrated in this video. For automations to work seamlessly, delays must be less than 5 seconds. The flashing method is kind of tedious. If you don't want to flash anything, you really should get this unit from Refos. It works 100% locally out of the box. Sadly, it was not available when I bought my View 3. Otherwise, I would have never bought the employee units. It's really up to us, the consumers, to just say no to lousy hardware that's tied to the cloud. We really need to step up and vote with our money. I'm going to assume your Emporia is installed already. Here's my existing configuration. The View 3 is powered down now. I tap it into these two breakers, so that's why they're off. Now we can work freely without getting shocked or electrocuted. Of course, you're certainly welcome to use one of the tester to verify that there is no electricity. Here I'm using the Klein. My two breakers are feeding the red and black wire to power up the View 3. None of them are active. Now we can proceed to disconnect the View 3 completely from all of the wiring from the left, top, and right side. Let's begin the flashing process by opening the enclosure. To access the motherboard, just release the five screws as before. One, two, three, four, five. Once all five screws have been released, Hold it with your left hand like so. Press where my index finger is. Press it down and then lift it up. There's really no need to remove the bore from the bottom cover. If you have a 3D printer, use this jig right here and then have all the wires plugged into the holes and these will be connected to the serial adapter to be flash. It's really nice that somebody came up with this jig idea there's no need to use the BDM frame. If you don't have a 3D printer, then we'll have to stick with the BDM frame. It comes in pieces like so. Assemble the legs together. Once the legs are done, it's time to put the acrylic sheet on top using the big screw. Do one side and repeat the other side. Screw it on. Make sure the legs are straight if you want it to look nice and pretty. That's basically it. This is the end result. Now we're going to put the board directly underneath and then stick the probe down from the top going downwards into the pins that we need to touch. Personally, I didn't find this jig to be very helpful. I like my medium frame. You got all five pins connected there, but there's only four pins connected to the serial adapter. That's because the IO pin and ground are both connected to the same header right there, the two DuPont connectors. If all is connected properly, then the serial adapter will be lit up when you run all the commands. Both the TX and RX will be flashing, doing its thing. Let's take a closer look at the wiring. I'll have a link to this wiring diagram so you can trace it if that's easier for you. All of this is possible thanks to DigiBlur and his YouTube video. On the view 3, there is ground that goes into the ground of the serial adapter. This hole is the IO pin and it also goes to the ground. 3.3 pin goes to VCC. Be sure on the adapter that the switch is flipped to the 3.3 volt side and not the 5 volts, otherwise you might fry the View 3 with too much power. RX goes to RX, TX goes to TX. When all the connections are done, plug the serial adapter into the USB port of any Windows machine to get started with flashing. Do not plug the serial adapter first and then connect the wires, otherwise you might damage the View 3 board. By the way, if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing and liking the video. This lets YouTube know my video is indeed helpful and will recommend it to others like yourself. Before we actually flash anything, we really should back up. 
You definitely need this tool, it's called ESP tool. All of the links will be included in the video description below. Go to the website. Go all the way down to the bottom. We are on a Windows machine, so we're going to click on this, the zip file. Copy everything in the zip file. Go to your C drive, create a new folder. I'm going to name it ESP Tool. And then paste the zip files in. You should have all six files that look something like this. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to use Command Prompt. Go into the directory where you install the ESP tool. Mine is in the C drive. Use this command, ESP tool, flash ID to verify that you are indeed connected to the employer view. It's showing all of the ESP32 board information. If you're not seeing this information, then you are not connected to the board properly. And before we flash anything, let's do a backup. Run this command to backup your existing factory firmware. This takes a while, so now is a good time to get some ice cream. The backup will be safe in your ESP2 folder. It's about 8 megabytes small. I'm going to assume you have ESP Home installed already. If not, I'll share a link below on how to get ESP Home into Home Assistant. Since I already have ESP Home, I'll click on this tab, click on New Device, click on Continue, give it a name, whatever you want, ESP32 chip. I'm going to skip the encryption key, find the employer view 3, and then click on edits. I'll share this code with you in the description section below, no need to type anything. You'll need to edit the OTA section on line 26. Wi-Fi starting line 32. I have two Wi-Fi networks in the house, that's why you've seen two Wi-Fi. Set the static IP address if you like. Take a look at line 86 and 93. You'll definitely need to edit your phase A and B values for red and black. Also, lines 115 through 130. This will depend on which breakers you install the clamps. For some clamps, I had to add a multiplier. For example, my central air system uses 240 volts. It makes no sense to use two clamps. I install one clamp and then use a multiplier. For simplicity's sake, I'll keep the naming convention as circuit 1 through 16. You can rename them to whatever later on in Home Assistant. If you're not using Wi-Fi, remove this section and add in your own Ethernet code. You cannot have both Ethernet and Wi-Fi in the same YAML. Once the YAML file has been edited, suited to your situation, your needs, then go ahead and select all, copy, go back into ESP Home and then paste it in. Click on Install. It will be a manual download. Choose Modern Formats. I'm using a Chrome box, so compiling it takes another 10 minutes or so. When finished compiling with the Modern Format, your browser will spit out a bin file to your download folder. Now, let's open up Edge, Microsoft Edge browser. It cannot be Firefox. It can be Chrome or Edge, but it cannot be Firefox. Go to this address, web.esphome.io, and then click on Connect. Select your serial USB adapter. Click on Install. Choose the bin file. Click on Install. It looks like it is offline because the antenna is not connected and that's okay. We can put the cover back on, connect all the wires, 
put it back into the electrical box to see how it works. Now that we're done with flashing, we're just going to put everything back together. Don't forget to put the five screws back in. There is two hot powering the View 3 as mentioned earlier, the red and the black. Make sure that whatever breaker that you have it connected to or power source that you have it connected to is off. That's why we're not getting any power whatsoever. Verify that the power source for the Employee View 3 is indeed off before touching any of the wires. You've got your B, A, plugging the wire for the antenna. If you're using Ethernet, plug that in. And now start plugging back all of the clamps. On the terminals, I use permanent marker to label them all to avoid any confusion. For some reason, it's really important for the employer ESP home firmware to know which one is which, whether this is A, B, or A, B, B. We know for sure that this is A because we routed straight to the A terminal in a box right there. And we also know for sure that this is B because we routed straight to the B terminal of the employer. When we come down to here and here, we actually have no idea whether it's A or B. For example, I tap my red employer into this right here, but I have no idea whether red is actually on A or B. And same thing goes for the black wire, whether it's A or B. The easiest way to find out is by using a multimeter. Put it on the AC mode, voltage AC, Put one probe on this side of the hot leg A, and then put the other on the breaker that you want to know whether it's A or B. If the value on the multimeter is zero, that means that they are both on the A. If the value is 240, that means it's on A plus B for a sum of 240. Therefore, the breaker must be on the B leg. Let's do it right now. Put it on voltage AC. This is my red power supply for the employer, and we get zero volts. That means this red line is on the leg A. We're going to do the same with the black wire that's going into the employer. We're getting 240, so we know for sure that this is on the leg B. And this is on leg A. Or in the YAML file, it's referred to as phase A or phase B. Let's go back to Home Assistant. When we power up, it should show up as online, and that's a good thing. Go into Settings, down a little bit to Integration. There we go, we found a device. That's also good. Click on Configure. Submit. This is in my basement. Click on Finish. Let's go down a little bit to ESP Home. Go down to Employer View 3 and see what we got. Everything is reporting and that's good. Most likely, not everything is correct just because you got the A and B column as mentioned earlier. Here's the circuit, circuit 12. I haven't renamed yet. On the other circuits, on the other clamps, I renamed mine already. To rename, you can just click on the uh, entity Click on the gear icon, and then rename it whatever you want. If for whatever reason one of your entity, your sensor is showing zero or some super low value, it's okay. We can just go into ESP Home, click on Edit Employee View 3, go all the way down to the lines that you need to adjust. So for example, if your circuit 1 is showing a value of 0, then go to line 115, change the phase from phase A to phase B, click on Install, and then click on Wirelessly. There's no need to flash it manually using the BDM frame as before. One thing I noticed is that the balance value is not available from DigiBlur's basic YAML code. Thankfully, total value consumed is there. If I ever figure out this balance thing, I'll update the YAML code for you. 
If you do know, please drop a comment below and share the code with everyone. Alright, hopefully you found this video helpful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.